Oh, this is not right. The worst feeling is when you go back to edit and your, your footage is just so out of focus. I think I'm good. Okay, so anyway, here's the deal. I'm starting this again. Um, well, first of all, let me explain what's in the shot. So, the door's over here. This is my Fantasy Football League poster of all the teams I won this year. Um, here's my name. My name is Blair. I told you that starting this new year because I didn't want to be like known as like Spickstar or whatever. Cool. Um, I have some old cameras that I got as gifts. I have a, a slap board. I'm not sure if that's what it's called. Um, but it's for like timing and scenes and stuff when you're doing filmmaking. It's kind of just a decoration right now. But I do plan on using it. I got it from a really good friend. Um, he's a boss. He's awesome. You know who you are. Um, and then my initials are there. Um, let's see, I have some, a few movies back here. Can't really see them. I actually drew this, the Sharpie on a canvas. That was fun. Um, this is my Olin, well, you can't really see it, but I have an Olin Rogers poster. It's a limited edition. It says, uh, there will be people that will say you can't make a living should probably memorize this. Out of something you love to do, but are you really living by not doing it? And it's actually signed by him. It was limited edition. I actually bought it in my high school cafeteria during lunch because I saw it that it was limited time on his Instagram. I'm like, gosh, I gotta get that because that's that's kind of what I believe in a lot of ways. Um, there's a dartboard here, which is a really bad place to put when there's a camera when there's a computer here. So I printed. We don't use it at all, me and my brother. I actually room with my brother. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, I guess uh, my laptop's here. This is art by, oh gosh, what's his name? I think it's E-Boy. Uh, he did it was art on New Van Gogh, previously Jealous Skins. So I really like their stuff. I have it on a lot of my my tech. It's on my, it's on my tablet too here. Let me show you. This isn't him though, but this is different concept. Like it's super thin skin, so I just put it on the tablet, and then I have, actually have a clear view, clear view case over it. But I really like covering my stuff with art rather than just being the plain back. Although my iPod is white right now, I used to have. That's in my closet. There's a table in the way here. Um, that had a really cool graphic on it too, but I kind of wanted to go back to the white because it's kind of like Stormtrooper. I don't know, I like it. Um, anyway, this is my computer. There's another monitor here that has Pandora on it. I'm listening to 21 Pilot Station on Pandora. I love Pandora. Um, I have a measuring stick because I'm actually working on a project. Yeah, let me show you what it looks like actually. This is for my wall over here. I don't know if you've seen it in my videos, but it used to have like paint tiles all down it. And then um, I changed it to like this moon kind of art piece that I like blocked up and I got off a of deviant art which I really enjoy. Um, but this is the color coding of the different I don't know if you see it, it's probably too bright. But these are different depths. Each color represents a different depth. And so it's actually gonna be like a paper abstract paper art thing. And it's like these three 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 inch by three inch squares that go on to like different depths of blocks. It's gonna be really cool. I'll show you. I'll probably show you a little bit of that in a different video. Anyway, so what I really wanted to talk about was YouTube, okay? So YouTube's been around a long time, way before I even started, but I started YouTube probably about three years ago. So I've been on YouTube for about three years. Now, that being said, I really haven't done much in over the three years. And starting this year, I was like, you know what? I'm really gonna, I'm really gonna start doing stuff. But, unfortunately, I work a full-time job, and I actually explained this in the Where Have You Been video. But I thought I wasn't very, like, that was a really bad video <laughs> for me personally, because I was just coming back and I was like, it's kind of like my first time all over again when I did VEDA, the first time I ever started YouTube. That was really embarrassing. In fact, many of those videos actually aren't on the channel anymore. Um, except a few of them are that I, that I kind of enjoyed. But anyway, so I guess my my fear is not putting enough time into my content and 
it's it's more of a personal thing than a viewer thing. Like, I really like having people enjoy what I do, but at the same time, I really want. I think I view my YouTube channel as more like a practice for me, like practicing my editing skills and all that stuff that I've been doing since I was like 11. But it was really my chance to kind of show it to more people. Um, now that opens up to a lot of criticism, but um, I wanted to. My channel is more about like making things that I enjoy and then hopefully other people will see them and be like inspired to like create their own way. Um, creativity or like creating different stuff or drawing or whatever, like my sketch videos, is really a way for me to kind of release my my thoughts and what I'm doing and it's really a way to kind of like release all the tension of my week and everything that's going on. Um, so in that way, it kind of gets really difficult to make content. Um, that's mainly because I'm juggling so many different things. Like right now, currently, let's see how many jobs I'm, I'm involved in right now. Um, I'm in, I have a full-time job, I have a part-time job some nights. Um, I have another, I have another job I'm doing some IT stuff. I have another job that's on its way where I'll be editing some videos for someone, um, or some content for someone. I have a job that's in the works to do more stuff freelance for myself, um, so I'm still trying to figure that out and plan it. Um, oh, there's something else. There is, there's another one where I'm going to be meeting with someone to kind of learn the ropes of a different job just as another source of income because YouTube is definitely not my main source of income in fact I don't know if I'm allowed to share this but since being a YouTube partner since 2013 I've earned like maybe five dollars and twenty cents so this is definitely a hobby not anything financially stable so just so you know this is not my main source of income at all and that's why a lot of my time actually gets eaten up by other things that I need to be able to provide for my income um so yeah I guess I guess I've just been struggling with YouTube in the way that like I want I'm afraid that my content won't be authentic and honestly this conversation we're having right now is probably the most authentic I've ever felt speaking to you guys um, I fear that when I post something it won't be showing who I truly am and I think it's easy for people on YouTube and lots of other youtubers have said this like Connor Franta in a couple videos and um, way back um, where they're like I'm totally different <laughs> from when I'm on YouTube. Like, when I'm on YouTube, I'm so much more, like, energetic and fun and, and crazy, but when I'm off YouTube, I'm so lazy and I'm just on Twitter the whole time, is pretty much what Connor said. And, I mean, I get that. I really do. But I don't know... I don't really want to be that way. I kind of want you to see who I am and kind of what I do and just kind of, like... I don't know if living vicariously is that way, but I know a lot of people who just don't always have a creative outlet for things, and maybe me creating is a way for you to kind of, I don't know, get attached to those things that you would do to kind of release yourself creatively. Um, if you're not a creative person, if you're athletic, or, um, I don't know, what else do other people do? Um... I don't know, athletic, I get, being athletic is a very easy way to, like, if you work out a lot, that tends to be a release for some people. For me, I enjoy working out, but I'm not very good at sticking to a schedule. Um, but when it comes to creating stuff, like, when I have the time to, I really want to do it. So, I guess what I'm trying to say is, if you don't have a creative release, it doesn't have to be creative. But find something where you're able to put a lot of thought, like things go, that go through your head on a normal day, and just be able to release them in some way that's very positive um, for yourself. So in the case of athletics, like that's making you stronger, like physically, um, 
and making you a healthier individual or creatively where you're able to practice your skills and and kind of see those grow more I think that's very important and um give yourself a way to kind of let that stuff out because there are a lot of things that go in your week that other people don't experience but as soon as it it kind of gets put into a constructive thing that you're good at or that you show a different skill in then other people are kind of experiencing your life through what you do with your experiences if that makes sense so the most recent video i posted where i was like doodling a ton like each of those doodles represent something bigger that happened in my head during the week or during that time period where i was just like maybe exhausting a frustration or a thought process or something I was really enjoying or just a lot of different things um and if you watch that video which it doesn't have any views but that's okay like I'm not I don't really care about views but because this is my way to kind of release everything but anyway if you saw that video you kind of experienced what I experienced but you experienced it visually rather than the thought process through my week but anyway you can kind of see how it's kind of cool where people might not know you personally what you're going through but when you have a way to put it into something like a body of work or actually a body of work it's cool because people are actually able to like see in an associative way everything that goes on emotionally through that week or that time period or in your life in general and they're able to experience it through a different skill that you perfect or are able to grow through what you do. That seems like really, really complex. But I think it's a very simple and healthy habit to get into. And so what I'm trying to say, I guess, for myself, is I need to be able to do this more. Um, I think so oftentimes I sell out because I'm either tired or I feel like I'm not being authentic or there's just a lot of other pressures like someone's doing it better than me then so why why does that like I shouldn't let other things define how I do my skill or how I perfect my task um, other people might be doing it better but you don't have to be at the same spot someone else is they may be better than you but you're on your own unique journey and eventually you'll either catch up to them or you'll be going a different direction and that's totally okay um so yeah so i guess this is a challenge for myself and for you for you to kind of find something where you can release your different frustrations passions whatever into a body of work or um however you do that in a constructive way that isn't hurting others and um i guess for me to be better at using my time to make better content and content that's authentic and, and more one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I think a lot of YouTubers now are realizing that people really want real people on YouTube. And um, I think this is one thing that Joe Weller has talked about and I think this is uh, Crab Sticks has also touched on and Olin Rogers have been like you know there's a lot of challenge videos and there's a lot of stuff where people are just going going taking the common grain of everything on YouTube and they're just kind of following it um, but people are kind of starting to catch on to that and be like hey maybe maybe not like we want more of that community aspect and when it comes to challenge videos like sure I might do a couple challenge videos on this channel at some point with my friends so that's cool but I think when that becomes your common thing it ends up being it ends up being a character and and sometimes collabs are very much like people get confused over collabs nowadays too it's like are they just doing this like are they actually friends in real life versus not anyway what I'm trying to say is I think when people I think connection is really important to people I really do and but at the same time I think authentic connection is really good for people like having a, a meaningful conversation with people is is much more valuable um, than just a just a um, small talk which I think I guess um, challenge videos are the small talk 
of YouTube, whereas authentic videos are the are the meaningful conversation. So I guess that's a good association to make. Um, and I think people are more gravitating towards the authentic conversation rather than the small talk, which is really cool. Um, anyway, thanks for listening. This has definitely been a rant, but um, I'm going to keep doing this project because I'm also really bad at starting something and not finishing it. So we're going to get better at that too. Um, I'll show you this stuff in a different video actually because I'm going to do it. Um, I gotta keep myself accountable too. That's another thing. Accountability is really tough for me. Anyway, I will see you guys whenever the next time I see you. Hopefully sooner than later. And just kind of think about these things for yourself. Like, yeah, I'll see you another time. Bye! There should be elves. Where are the elves? Yeah, where are the elves? Where are they? They are gathering in the center of the city. That is where Santa will give the first gift of Christmas. Look! Elves! They're going to the harbor beyond the White Towers. To the Grey Haven. They're leaving Middle-earth, never to return.